hi happy new year everybody the first youtube video for 2022 um do you know i realize i do a lot of this all the time do you know it's just it's so flipping cold <laughs> it's so cold up here in the studio i've not even got any socks and my feet are freezing um right so um yeah 2022 who thought we'd actually get here eh so hopefully we have a really good one. I send blessings and giggles to everybody for the rest of this year. Make the best of what you've got, loves. Honestly, there's no point fretting over it. You can't change it. You can't stop it. It's going to happen. Deal with it afterwards. Honestly, there's more things. There's worse things in the world going on rather than us getting a ladder in our tights or the heel breaking off your shoe when you're on your way to work and the last thing you need to be doing is running down the shoe zone because you've only got 10 quid in your pocket. Right, anyway... Um, today I thought I would do a sort of ugly bat trans transformation. Um, I don't often get wool for my Christmas, believe it or not. Mr. Phil says that I'm going to use it for blending for you guys. And I'm like, no, I won't. So this year is the first year he's ever actually bought me some wool. And I don't mean yarn, I mean fluffy wool for me to spin up and everything else. So. I went to a company that I really, really have most admiration for. Um, I'm not going to mention names because this is not about slating. This is just about um, you. If you got something at Christmas from Will and you really love the dye that you got it from, but this just feels like there's something missing or you want to add another dimension to your to your will and you're lucky to have a carder or a blending board where you can create the will into little roll lags or fold lags if you want to do half and half on your board um, and just give it a bit more oomph to it or to if you want to do weaving um, and you want different color dimensions and tones and things like that in the world that's not already in there then this is what I mean by upgrading your bats so i loved what i sort of i gave him a couple of options on the website um from the ones i liked and he, he chose these two for me so he got, he got me a the both carded bats so i really don't i'm going to take the label off because i really don't want to say because honestly i really really love this company it's just the wheels a bit mm. so this has got sari silk in there and let me see what else has it got in there. It has got um, merino alpaca silk and there's supposed to be some sparkles in there. Yes, there are bits of sparkles. It's got some lovely teals in there and I really do love the colours in it. And I'm quite, I really are quite happy with this. Um, so there's loads of blues and whites in there. So there's that one, but then in order this one, this is um, a like a multi-pack carded bat so there was this big one now i can't really get the light today do you know it's always the same no matter where i am and there's sunshine today as well but it's a i think you can get the gist of it it's got peaches in there it's got really dusky pinks and there's hints of greys in it as well um but i just feel like it's got no drama to it so yeah and it's a gigantic carded bat now i'm thinking it's very short on the fibers well i say short but they're not the longest and i think i would struggle to try and spin this as it is so and i want to use it for weaving a shawl because obviously it's a christmas present i want to do something with it that i can actually use it and wear an item with it i don't know whether to weave a shawl or crochet i've not done a crochet and I've, i have got one project that i need to just finish off the edging before i'm allowed to do any more crochet projects because do you know what we all know what it's like you start a project, you put it to one side, you forget about it and you lose it and then you start something else and then you start something else. So I've currently got a shawl I need to finish up crocheting off the edge, but I'm playing yarn chicken, chicken yarn with that at the moment. So that's been sat in a basket downstairs waiting for me to finish it off since I think summer last year on one of my live chats. Um, and then I've got my chicken jumper from Hilary Muff and the, uh, the Magic Fungi. But there's a reason. I don't have DPNs in the correct size to be able to do my arms. So I haven't got the pennies to go and buy any at the moment. So I can't finish that off. The body's done, the neck's done. I've done the button hole thing to attach on, but I can't get my arms finished. And I've only got literally from here to there to do, but I can't do it without my DPNs and I don't have the right size. So 
Iona, watch, sorry, the dog. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got this cardigan I need to do. And then I've got um, my, oh, my new jumper that I dyed up all the yarn for it. And it's a merino worsted wool and it's really quite thick and chunky. So I've been doing this at night time. So I found it the other day. It was sat in my advent calendar stash basket and I brought it up the stairs. So it's in my bedroom now and I've been, I've been doing a little bit of that at night time just to tire up my brain. So anyway, I've gone off on one. So yes, yeah, so I need to decide what I want to do with it. But I want to really just juice this up a little bit. And I thought I'll go through my thought process of how I come up with my, occasionally come up with my colourways if I want to create colours that are going to work together. So get rid of that plastic bag, I'll have to recycle that. I can't be doing plastic bags. So I also got these really, really pretty locks, which are really nice. So I thought, well, maybe I can add them in because they are quite loose, but there's still a little bit of lanolin on them. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do. I might have to stick them. Yeah, they're still a bit sticky. On the ends i think i might have to rewash them um, and then maybe add them in as i'm spinning might be the best option instead of me using them on the actual um spinning um blending and then i have got this multicolored merino roving as well and there's quite a lot of it there so that's what i've got to work with so i have got that and that so there's blues in there and there's hints of yellows and the same with that one as well and then i've got to try and bring it so all of these will work together so what do you do when you've got colors that you're not quite sure what to do with generally hunt through your stash but sometimes you just need a little bit of inspiration to make sure your work work uh, your work will work so bear with me i'm just going to pop you off my stand and we're going to have a look at some ways to go and find some ideas and inspiration okay so people always ask me how, oh, where's the best place to go so i thought if i typed in mood board ideas with dusky pink and blue and i went to google so if i do it again i'll just come out of this page and I'll type it in again for you so you can see how I've done it. So, mood board ideas, dusky, oh, dusky, dusty. If I go dusty, no, I spelt that wrong again. Do you know, gel your film, dusty pink and blues. Do a Google search. Now, so it comes up with all those there, okay? And go to images. And on there, if you scroll through, it gives you other ideas. So if you're, you're looking for color inspiration for bedrooms or blush pinks, dock egg blue, or a navy blue, or specific rooms. But these are really good for looking for inspiration of how to put colors together when it comes to making, um, looking through your stash, literally looking through your stash. Have a look, see if you've got any colors that are similar to what's on these mood boards or get your dye pot going and go and have a little play around with what you've got downstairs so there's this one here so i love the color of that but it's more of a gray blue than it is a um, sky blue like what i've got so I just click out and then go and just start scrolling through to see if there's anything that i can put together that's pardon me nearly the same as what i'm looking for so that's just one idea. So, I mean, I quite like that. I love that deep blue. And I could maybe get away. So that's nearly. And then I could I can add in some deeper blue to break down the brightness of the blue and help bring in the pink. And there's pinks in there as well. And there's a bit of beige in there. Now, have I got any beige? I have got just a little hint that, let me see, is mink merino. So I can put that to one side because I do have a little bit of that in. And I do have some blue here. So this is more of a, a, a dusky blue, I'm trying to get, but it's got hints of green in there. So do I want to use that? Alternatively, I've pulled this out and it's actually a BFL roving that I dyed up and it's got those deeper tones in there. So who's to say that I can't split that up? And then there is hints of sandy beige in there as well. So I could ideally put that with that 
see it does actually work I've got some grey glitz and I do want to add in a bit more grey into there just to bring out the grey in that and then add in some of this dusky pink but then that's that's that mink but then there's a lot of that then isn't there that's it's maybe it ends up being too much of that pinky color so where else would i go um i suppose i could go into more of a peachy color so i've got this it's got pinks in there and oranges um and peachy tones so that might actually help bring those colors up instead of it being all so muted. So what do you think to that, guys? Um, yeah, I think that could be where we're going with that. It's not quite that mood board, but when it comes to the colors that I have got available, and then adding in the pink locks later date when I'm spinning might actually really work. So I think that's the route that will probably go down so yeah there we go so alternatively if mood boards don't give you the ideas another place to go and have a look is i always look for color palette spelt the british way with the o o u r uh, color palette ideas so i'm going to click on that and it's already on it usually it would pop up on that page and then i click on images and then it gives me a load of different ideas. So do I want a color palette that's muted or grays or reds or oranges, pastels, complementary. So if you click on complementary and then see what it comes up with. See like these, I don't know where these, these come from. I'll procreate color boards. So that's a good idea. I've never seen them. So I might have a look on those in a minute, but apparently you can buy them on Etsy. But this is a good thing to do is to, get one of these save it to your phone and print it off on your printer these color wheels and they helps you decide where your colors will be contrasting or um, make each other become more enhanced okay so it's basically just choose the right color scheme for your own this is for powerpoint but really it's the same thing when it comes to deciding what wheels you want to work um, colors you want to work together so there's this one so it shows you a triangle of colors that will match together or complement each other or uh, contradictory to each other so yeah that's definitely a good way to go looking at things but stuff like this where you've got your colors and it's just an image and they've took the four or five basic colors from the image and then you can go and do your dye pot there's another one here it's got these colors down there from this one image and you can go off and just go and dye them up those different shades of green don't worry if you haven't got the exact same shades of green you can always add a little bit of black to what you've got a little bit of gray is actually a good idea to go down and then you've got this mustard yellow and then you've got this it looks like a deep red but i think that it looks like there's a hint a hint of brown in that just the slightest touch of brown but yeah so color palette or mood boards is a really good way to get started art is another one it's just a little thing up the top there so if you're into art and you nature inspired color palettes that's where it's color not that one but i wouldn't say that i would say it's more art inspired but if you if there's a picture that you like and you're like oh do you know i really like that how would i get the colors i mean look at that one there I think it's quite self-explanatory what colours you would use in that if you wanted to do a comparison art bat. But it gives you the suggested idea colours down here. You could actually maybe go shades darker or shades lighter in the oranges and stuff or add little splashes of red because someone in the background with a red coat on. Um, you could add in some um, undyed mulberry silks or some woolly neps in there because of the stars in the skies. So there's lots you can do with them, but definitely. So I think I'll get on with doing what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a bit of blending and I will come back to you in a bit and we'll see what we've done so far. And then I'll show you how I created it. Right. So I've just had a little play around with one collection of pictures, um, colorway methods. So 
I've done this one and now I felt like it just needed something a little bit shiny. So I went through my stash of um, mulberry silks and I picked up a different, a couple of different colours. So I went with a blue and a grey mulberry silk because it's got a lovely shine to it. If you want something to just add a little bit of something else, a different dimension to your wool because sometimes wools can look quite flat. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll grab some of those. And I've got some lotus fi uh, fibre as well. So I added that in just for, hold on a second, just for a really soft, creamy, it's more of an off-white, but it is a creamy colour, um, just to add in a little bit something else to this wool. Now I'm going to do this one again, but once I've done that one and shown you how I've done it, I'm going to show you how um, I like to break my bats up to help define these colour layers that I've got going on and I re-blend it and double card it. So some of these I've ended up with one, two, three, four, potentially five bats that I could end up making and spinning off. So it's going to be a bit of a long term project, but it's as I say, it's going to be for something which I will video um, or do on my live chat so you can see what I'm up to with this Christmas gift of mine um, just to see how it progresses. I think it's going to end up being quite a tweedy type wool because this this is the the dusky pink merino and it is quite neppy. Um, so I think it'll end up being quite a nice tweedy type wool. Hence, I wanted to just add in that little bit of shine just to break that up a little bit. So I'm just going to put this on my chair now. Get back to the drum carder, and you can see how I've put these together. there in comparison to the two that we had originally and all those dusky tones and then just added in some shine in there and some little bits and pieces just to give it a bit more oomph 
and a bit more glamour about it. It's a simple thing to do. I mean, I'm sure you've got plenty in your stash and that's not to say that you couldn't do this on your blending board. Now, if you've got a wool, a carded wool, now when you, when you, when you're doing a recarded wool on your, um, doing a second carding on your drum carder, I always find that once I um, pull it apart, it becomes quite aerated. So I can't always get, normally I can get about 100 grams on, on my drum card because I've got the really long tines on mine. Um, generally people have the shorter tines, you could get about 70, 50 to 70 grams of fibre on there. But when you're recarding or double carding, I'll just reach over and get it. When you're double carding a bat, this has already been carded before, but when I go to recard it again, I am never going to get the exact same volume back onto my bat. It's going to be a lot more harder work to be able to get that going. It's just the process. So um, generally, it will probably knock my, the, just the volume that's already in there. For some reason, it, it's like you're trapping more air into the fibre. Um, so I generally find when i'm double carding my bats i have to make sure that i'm bob on my weight i don't go over 100 grams and i may be left with about two three grams to one side or i'm really just going to force it straight into my card i'm going to say no no prisoners today you will do as you're told i need to double guard you so yeah i find so if you're using wool that's very very short in fibers like this very nepe on your blending board do not use this as your base Put all your um, your fancy stuff, so like put put your, um, you can get maybe the BFL on there as your first base and then add in your silks and things like that first. Then build up your colours on top of that and then put this on sort of middling to last because it's such a short fibre that it will stick in your, in your tines on your, on, your, um, on your needles on your blending board. That's just my little tip. I mean, not to say that you couldn't use it and do it from there, but you might find there's a lot of residue left behind. And there's quite a lot of residue left inside my carder from using this as a base. Um, so just a, a little tip there. If you use it on your blending board, do not use this first as you're layering. Think of it backwards. Think of it as when you're dragging it and, and you're creating that row, like that puny. It's the, bot the first layers you're putting on are the ones you're going to see on the outside of your roll lag so think of how it's going to look from the bottom up there you go so i'm going to get on the rest of these i'm going to do this next one um but i'm going to strip it i'm going to strip it down now this is where you'll see that i might not be able to get it all on in one go because this is getting double carded but the reason it's getting double carded is because i want to show the layers so i'm going to do a couple like this one and leave it like that because when it comes to spinning it up i'll end up with two different types of effects of spun yarn so i'm going to strip this off into i think four i might get away with four but i don't want them too thick because i'm gonna to have to draft them out a little bit as well as i'm doing it so i'm going to split them into four sections and do it on this one as well Now, I've said this before in previous videos, if you want in your world to look like a striper effect or you want to double card it, but you don't want to lose all the character and colour that you've put in there, this is my top layer and that's my bottom layer. You can see that straight away, okay? In between is my layers. So when I put that on my blending board in a minute, I want to open that up, just fluff it out a little bit. So when I blend it, all these colours, all these layers in between, turn it into a slightly striping bat. So that ideally you could just strip the colour sections off as you're spinning to help create, not fractal, nothing as technical as that that you're going to get from a roving, but it means I can actually um, have some manage colour management control over spinning my yarn. So that's what I'm going to do next.
so this one here is single carded and you can see the colors and everything else in there and it looks really really pretty okay whereas this one has been double carded now you've seen at the end where I was putting that last bit on that I was starting to struggle and that's what I mean about when you're double carding your wool don't worry if you can't get it all on try and maybe the card in back that you're wanting to double card split it in half and just do half the section card it through and then do the other section and card that through and then then you'll end up without not having to really work hard to get that sorted onto your drum card all in one go but yeah there is a there is a difference there is a difference this one looks more gradient if i was to flip it out move this little one out of the way but if i was to flip that out there you go it's more of a gradient look so you you've got the blues in there and then there's hints with the yellows that i've put in and then you've got these peachy tones and then it goes into that oh sorry into those bitty bits there so there is a difference that's actually yellow but it's matrix green and so it's definitely going to be a very nippy yarn to spin and then this little one here the first one that you saw me doing it's i think i shall prefer it like this but i know why i've done it like that so that one has got a slight gradient to it but not overall but it's colour layered on the inside so it's up to you how you want to do it I mean it's two different techniques to be able to um, create your will I, I would say that doing that double carded will help you get a really lofty woolen spin whereas this one's only been carded once and all the fibres are going in the same way. I mean, that is as well anyway. But I just got the feeling that because it's got a lot more volume to it, even though it's exactly the same amount of fibres been used in this one, in comparison to that one, that's definitely a lot more loftier. So I think I would probably get away with spinning that as a more of a woolen wool, and this one more of a worsted wool, though you've got all these nappy bits in there. So, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that... Um, transference of my bats i will do some videos of spinning them um i ideally like to try and maybe create some um some wool where i've dyed it using these similar colors of dusky pinks some grays and some blues in there and creating an art yarn that i can use in with this project but i need to think about what i want to do um but yeah Add in some shiny bits. If you've got some really dull looking wool or dusky looking wools that you want to card up but you're really not sure where to go, find some shiny stuff. Not necessarily Angelina and Sparkles because they're a bit of bling but I think this, the silk versions of things or plant based fibres like rose fibre and pineapple and mint, uh, the mint one, yeah, the, and milk. They've got a really nice shine to them. Use something like that if you haven't got any silks, but you've got some plant base. Look for a little bit of shine, and that'll help just build that up a little bit more and give it a different dimension instead of just being a flat, dusky tones. So, there we go. Converting and bolstering my Christmas bats. So I've got one, two, three, I think four more to do. Um, I've got to go and feed the birds. I've always got to go and feed the birds, haven't I? So I need to go and do that, and I've just received a Christmas card from a customer in America. So 17th of December it was posted, so I need to go and read that as well. Oh, excited. So you take care of yourselves, and I will be available for live chat on Saturday on my Instagram, as usual. I'm back to posting um, all the time now, so Tuesdays and Fridays, back to doing my usual routine. Don't forget that if you spend £35 or more on the website, then you get free postage automatically. Batty Clubs are open now. Uh, this month it's Lunk. Um, and it's a British wool breed that I've managed to source. So I'm just, that order is supposed to come today, that stock order. So I'll be getting them dyed up next week. And the closing date, I've changed it now. I've done a closing date for my batty clubs for the 15th of every month. It gives me a week, just, just in case anybody comes in at the last minute and orders one. Because I've had that happen to me a couple of times on the run up to Christmas. And it's sort of a bit of, oh, I need to, I've not got quite enough, but I've managed, I've managed it. I've done it anyway. But um, it's just preparation, that's all. So it means that everything will still be posted out on, the, on or about the 24th of every month. But it gives me a couple of days leeway to make sure I've got plenty of time to dye up and everything else. And for Heather to get stitch markers over to me from Flame Knits. 
Um, so yeah, what else news have I got? Um, American orders, or overseas orders, I'm back posting them out again. Um, I've not really stopped to be fair. I'll be doing those as usual, but don't forget I do international tracking through Royal Mail and it's end-to-end -end tracking. So once it leaves the UK, um, you can actually get a link from Royal Mail through to the USPS alert them that you're keeping an eye on this number and have them send you emails and text alerts so you can see exactly where it is because that's what i do when i'm waiting for customers stuff to go through i'm sorry that i don't do it any other way but sometimes if you send it by standard mail either a it doesn't get there at all or it takes about three months and i'm just not my nerves will be shot to pieces so i only do tracked international um art yarn's going to get some art yarn spun up as well and start uh, getting some of those on the website and i'm going to start dyeing yarns again um hopefully start getting i'm going to do a drop on the sh web shop every other month um just to it's just something I, something I used to do all the time when I was on the Etsy store. Uh, but since I've been on my new website, I haven't had a chance to do any. But I'll be bringing the yarns back in again. And I may be doing a yarn club um, sometime later on in the summer. But if anybody's interested, drop me a comment below. And um, I'll start putting plans in motion for those. So you take care and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.